after the shot series one and two covered basically how I call my images, how I, what do I do? I seem to have forgot. Convert the images to DNG to use and because as you'll see, this is a relatively old fashioned way of working with digital images and I'm constantly looking at new ways and trying out new things and not so new things to see if they improve my workflow. But this is what I do after the shot when it gets to the editing stage. Let's take a look at an old, <laughs> an old classic Photoshop. Here we are in Adobe Bridge then. I've opened up the DNG files. Now these have been worked on, so we're gonna have to hit default to get rid of the edits first, but you know, just trying to keep this nice and simple and maybe you'll glean something from it. Maybe it will save you going down this route and maybe quite likely the YouTube funsters will tell me that Lightroom etc is better. I do have some workflow tips coming up that potentially improve on all of this, but I'm just putting down what I've been doing up until recent times. So let's scroll down and find an image or two that could give me a bit of play. And let me just boost this up a little bit so we can see a bit more. Don't watch what was going on. It was very dark. This, I like this. And let's see if there's something in here that was relatively dark. It was a very dark bar. Flash was definitely the key. Although I'm going to open up a couple of natural flash free shots. Let's just open up a couple of randoms so we can see what's going on. Let's have a look at this one because it's got an interesting white balance vibe going on. Let's put a big group shot in. Let's open up these. So I'll go from bridge. I'll choose the images I want, open them up. They'll pop up in ACR, camera, raw. Now I'm just going to get set all these back to default. So we've got it as it is. Make sure my screen is at full brightness, obviously. And now you'll see because of this top corner here, I've got the highlights showing up in red there. And if I press across here, the shadows also. I'm mostly interested in those highlights. And I find that the T2, the T3, Fujifilm definitely got the dynamic range down to a T. In fact, if you go right back to the S5 Pro, Fujifilm are well thought of, well regarded for the dynamic range, skin tones, etc. Anyway, so I'm going to look at this and I'll look at the highlights and I might just bring that down a bit. So I can either bring it down until they completely disappear. I could even hold down the Alt button on my Mac and it will just show me the highlights. See if I go the, right the way up there and then right the way down should turn them off. Ideally, I want it to just where it comes away if it looks natural. Now you'll see some of the uh, tones on the skin start to get a bit dark. I'll play around and see what happens when I put the exposure up. In this case, we do get a little bit blown out still, but we'll go with that. As you bump the contrast up, that'll go again. Now, that could be down to exposing more for the highlights. Always a good tip to expose for the highlights, but let's just leave it at that for now. Shadows, maybe. Let's have a look. Let me just press Alt and see what happens there. If I push it all the way up, that's not what I want at all all the way down, also pretty ridiculous. So I might just give it a little bit just to give a bit more life to the image, just a touch. This is bounced flash, TTL, shot in manual. In fact, you'll see here F5, 130 for the second, ISO 800 with the 18 F2. So this was with the T3. Not gonna get into if the T2 and the T3 in this situation is a massive jump. Mm, let's just say the T3 performed excellently. It almost looked like that through the viewfinder. So it found the focus very nice actually, very surprised, way better than my own eyes were doing when I was looking through the viewfinder. And that was with preview pick effect off because 
when I'm shooting with flash, I don't use that. That's probably a whole other lesson. If you want to hear about that, let us know. Maybe we can do a video on how I use flash in a shoot like this. You should notice there is no sign of flash behind. Now, this bar had some mirrors that annoyed me in this shot. Not so badly. You can edit that out if you really want. We'll look at that. But anyway, what I'll do then, I'll think, okay, I'm happy with that. That's cool. Pass on to the next one. I might hit auto on all of them first and then work off it that way, but then I could just pull it back. Now, I shoot with auto white balance for the most part, so I might just put that to auto or as shot and then play around with the temperature here. Let's just put it into as shot and leave it like that. It's not too bad. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. Now, as a little side point, if I wanted to crop, I'll just hit C and I'll crop away to my heart's content. And if I click, you can choose your one to one, two to three, etc. I use two to three. That's what comes out of the camera. Well, as I've got it set, or if I'm doing thumbnails, nine to 16. And then I'll double click and it will just show me that. Now in this instance, I don't wanna crop it. So I'm happy with that. Now I might apply that to the next image. So I might apply the changes I did there to that one. So I'll select the first one, hold down shift, click on the next one, hit synchronize, press okay, as long as everything's ticked, which I already have because I've been doing it for a while. And that will pass it down to there. Now I'm just demonstrating this on a relatively slow MacBook Air. You'll see it's passed it across, but this image, a little bit hot there. So I might just then tweak it. it. Gives me a good base to work off. Let's just leave it like that for now. I don't think that's technically how I did it. Now this one's already cropped down from the full frame. Let me show you the full. Clear crop. I thought, well, I took it quickly. <laughs> Wasn't perfect, perfect straight out of the camera, but I knew that I could just crop a little bit. Now, be nice to get him on the thirds, but I'm quite happy with that space there. So we'll do it like that. Real photogenic couple. I've shot them before on another shoot a year before. So they've been together a year now, as they told me. So I'll give it a little bit of contrast boost there. Let's get the highlights and the shadows clipping again. So we can just see a tiny bit in the back there, but you know, I think I'll just rock it till they basically disappear. And you know, for all intents and purposes, I'm happy with how it looks. Now this is personal. Editing should be a personal thing. And if you're selling photographs, that's what you're selling is all part of your style, part of your personality with photography. So bear in mind what I'm doing here you may well do different. We're just sharing techniques, <laughs> even if they're relatively old techniques. Now, if I had a section of images that were all similar as you would normally get on a whole shoot, I might just apply all those changes as we showed you before, while being on the main image, the image you've just worked on, select the others or go up here, select all, hit synchronize, bam, goes across. As we've just selected images at random, I don't want to do that. Now, let's look at this image now. This was with the 60mm 2.4 on the T2, 1 20th of a second. I did quite well to get that. <laughs> I'm not that amazing once you get past 1 60th, 1 50th. ISO 12, 800. I mean, you know, it looks fine. As long as you focus on the eyes, get the eyes nice and sharp. Not too bad. It looks like it, it's still showing my final edits. Let's go back to the defaults. Look at that. Hit auto, bam, too much. So I'm gonna pull this back, pull the highlights back a bit. Maybe the cut, yeah, that's fine. You'll look around and you won't see much clipping going on. Shadows, boost. Now I'm really interested in the eyes popping out on this one. I could use a little bit of clarity perhaps, but not too much. Sometimes when I use a bit of clarity, I pull back on the contrast, just my style. Occasionally whites and blacks, vibrance. Often if I've got a landscape with skies, etc., just to make it pop. Saturation, not really my thing. I prefer to rock with the temperature 
And yeah, so that's at custom. Let's look at it as, as shot. Remember, if you saw it in bridge before, you might have saw it like that. Auto, none of them appealing. So as you can see, I've messed with the temperature. Color temperature could be a whole nother lesson for you if you're pretty new to this. And there you go, bam, we've got the image. Now you might think, all right, I'm not entirely sure it's sharp enough. In this case, I'm happy with it. But what I would do is just put the sharpening up, maybe 72, 70, whatever, and then just mask it so it's only, if you see what happens with the masking, if there's none, the sharpening's applied to all of it. If it's bumped up, say, to... 76 that's where it's going and now if i'm holding alt down there sharpening will just be there looks decent now usually i'm pretty happy with the images as they are and in the next stage i used to have a contrast adjustment but i've took that away because i find with my fuji files it looks after it in this stage so i've gone through all that now I'll probably have opened 10, 15, 25, and if I'm really <laughs> going for it, 50 images at a time. I've worked them through, bam, open. Depending if I'm working on this or on the Mac Pro, I might have to go and get a, a copper or <laughs> do something else to let it just get everything loaded into the memory, and then I'm gonna wait. So we'll do that, we'll open it up. These are only five images, so shouldn't be such a big deal. It's worth mentioning that this is where you need some decent RAM, decent hard drives. Again, a whole different video would really help out with that. But if not, you work out how many images your system can cope with at a time, and then bam, you open them up. Now, if someone's paying you, you'll invest in the right system, especially if you're trying to get through numerous shoots in a week, for example, you don't wanna be sitting there all day long. You can see it's now reading the camera raw format, opening it up pretty slowly because this is just my carry around computer. But once everything's open, we'll be good to go. And it's gonna be extremely simple, so no hate. I might just throw in a few bits and pieces here and there, but you know, you can see we're in a way. Now on the Mac Pro, I would have the left monitor purely for the image as big as possible and the right monitor for my toolbox, my actions, etc. I've got it pretty simple now on this little MacBook Air and that's what we're using to demo with. So, you know, once we get this thing going, <laughs> it is a tad slow. Right, so we're in. Now, a few little tips that I've picked up along the way now, you might be working with a lot more images, as I normally do. If you hold down Command and this wiggle here next to Shift, you can rotate through the images without having to press on the tabs. If you press Shift and the wiggle tab, <laughs> I should put up what that actually means, you can go the opposite way around. Very handy for getting through your images. Now, I'm going to show you this in one way. I've got it set up with actions so it automates things well let's just do that so you can see so i'll go down to automate batch i need to tidy this up a little bit level and sharpening open files no destination let me just do that i hit okay that was away that's putting in an auto level which i've found to be decent happy with that occasionally it blows it out but you can easily go back into that. Now, if you're gonna do a lot of destructive editing, it's good to use adjustment layers. And that's what I used to do in the past. I'm happy at the moment with how I'm doing it now. My unsharpened mask also, it's good to really study unsharpened mask well. And oftentimes, if you're just working on individual images, you leave that till the end and it will be specific. Now, there are different variables, depending on if you're shooting landscapes, people, etc. But this is just straightforward. So it's a really simple edit. In this picture, we can make it big by command zero. That's how it was before, and that's it now. Now you'll see that the auto tone, as it's called, which is levels, which is command L, is there, is giving it a nice bit of warmth. It's bringing back some of the vibe that was 
in the environment. Now you will notice what you'll probably call noise, but Fujifilm are very, very good at making that grain like. Now I'm a big fan of grain. I used to shoot film, Fujifilm Neopan 800 and develop it as 1600, so I would push it at, pull, push, anyway, I loved that grain, so I don't mind this at all, and as the eyes look nice and sharp, without going too pixel peeping, because obviously it gets a bit awkward as you go a lot closer, it's going to look great on a pretty decent size print. So you can see what Auto Tone has done, and Unsharp Mask, now you could argue that Smart Sharpen, around there is fine, or you could just leave the sharpening till after, or if you wanna go crazy, just do that specifically previously. Anyway, let's look at another image because it's extremely simple. What we've got here, levels. You'll see I've gone away from the edited version. You could always just boost levels up there. That's often a nice way of doing it, to get the white points, I think, to where it should be, and then you can just play around there. Here's the image there afterwards. <sighs> Bit bright, it's not too bad. I like the warmth that we had previously. Now if you use layers, you can just go in, edit, and delete the layers if you want. I mean, you can, you'd be able to go into this and just tweak it, which is actually a bigger advantage with adjustment layers. You can go in, tweak them to death if they haven't quite worked out. But to all intents and purposes, not bad. If it's a tad light, I might hit Command M, bring curves up, and then either press here and go to the bit that's annoying me. I mean, it's all pretty, really. And I'll press hold down, and you can just pull down to bring that area down or pull up, and you'll see it on the chart on the other side. I mean, it's not too bad really. Or you can just hit a linear contrast, which is what I used to do. Actually, it's not too bad, gives it a bit of punch. Let's just okay that. And now you'll see, if you haven't noticed already, I think you would've, in the history here, that's right there. So we can look at how that curves adjustments. Slight, yeah, I'm happy with that. So then, that's ready. Let's move on to the next image. And you know, I think, okay, I'm relatively happy. Again, let's see what happens when I just pull the curves down a little bit here. This side is your dark side, this is your light side. So you'll see a little point there. You can bring it to where the information starts. And then just pull it down a little bit there. It's personal. Taste. Now I do have a lot of actions that I use when I really want to get into something. If it's a tricky image or just something that I want to give a little bit more warmth, a little bit more boost. There's a whole bunch of stuff I can do. Photoshop has way more going on than just what I'm showing you. This is just a simple way of looking at it. Now this image, I like it, whatever. I'm not going to change anything. I do want to show you very quickly the spot healing tool. Now, let's see if one of these images has something. Let's just take this thing over here, for argument's sake, that is very sharp on the beard. You might think, well, that's a little bit awkward. Let's just make the spot bigger. It's usually good to do it in sections. As the system is calculating from a smaller and more accurate area. This bit, a little bit trickier. Now, that's not really where I'd want it. Me personally, I'd leave that in, but let me show you this tool on this side here, the clone stamp. Now I'll select it. I'll press Alt to choose where I want to clone from. So let's clone from right next to it. And then you can see as I move the size point up, it's showing me what's going to go there. So as I pull down, it's literally painting from the side next to it. Again, <laughs> I'm showing you stuff I wouldn't do normally with the particular image. So there we go. 
that gets rid of that a lot nicer. You can alt there, pull down there, but bear in mind if your size point is too big, it will push across, but that's what the preview is for. So you might go alt, spot there, and then you look and you think, okay, the preview is all right. Let's go down there and you can get rid of that. Now, without going too pixel peeping, that's not too bad. Let's just put it back to where it was. Command zero, and you think, okay, I'm happy with that. For me, it's all about the expression. Get it right as close as you can in the camera first time. You won't have to do so much editing. I personally don't like to use what I believe are faddish filters, styles, etc. because maybe five years down the line, you'll look back and go, I really I don't know why I did that. You know, let's just say, and I don't want to offend anyone, but selective coloring, for example. I do remember one wedding I did it on, and sometimes I look and I think, ah, I mean, it was okay at the time. But yeah, I want my images to last and be classic. Now, the editing style might be too simple for some of you. I mean, we've adjusted the white balance, the contrast, the highlights, the brightness. We've give the image some more boost and sharpen. And not particularly with this set, but we'll use the correctors, the clone stamp spot healing tool just to get it just where we want. Get rid of any distractions where appropriate. For the most part, I shoot documentary style. So what you see is what you get for the most part, especially with a wedding, a event such as this in a dark bar. It's all about the vibe, what's going on, and something that will last as a record for decades to come. I appreciate that was probably very random. I would urge you to take a look at some other stuff like Capture One. You can get the Express for Fujifilm or if you use something else like Sony and you can check it out. I am doing that. I'm thinking about moving over to Capture One, but this just works for me and the speeds that I can work with, not as I've shown you, but the speeds I can go through everything. I just haven't found something go faster for me, but arguably I can squeeze more out of the file. That's something I'm investigating as regular subscribers know. You can squeeze a little bit extra out of that file and I think that's the key now and plus I'm always playing around with stuff because you know it's a bit of fun right we've looked at culling converting the raw files if you're not on the extremely latest version of software etc and once they've updated for year bodies like your t3 etc and we've looked at basic edits using Photoshop you can apply these things to your preferred software Everything's personal, as we said, so I look forward to hearing your comments below, but play nicely. Everybody has their way of doing stuff, and I think we can learn from each other. So I'll see you below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, notification bell, a lot of cool stuff coming soon that potentially will be less random than this.